What up, Grow Gang? It's Tyler checking in. Today, I want to go over something that I get asked all the time. What are the best fish for aquaponics? Now, before you make a decision, I think it's important to consider two really big things. Number one, what's the ambient temperature of your grow area? If you're growing in a greenhouse or inside or in a northern climate or in a tropical climate, this is going to have a significant effect on your water temperature, which is ultimately going to have a significant effect on the species of fish that you raise. If you're in a greenhouse environment like this, chances are you're probably going to want to raise a warm water fish. I have seen greenhouses in states like California that are able to keep their ambient temperature in the 70s, and they're actually able to successfully raise trout. But for me right now, for example, it's about 90 degrees in here. It's tough to keep that water cool. So make sure you determine what the ambient temperature in your grow area is before you make a decision. The next thing you need to consider is what you're going to do with these fish. If you're in the aquaponics gig for a business, you definitely wanna make money selling the fish. You don't wanna have fish as simply fertilizer makers and just consuming your resources and not giving you any profit. So you wanna raise a fish that you can sell. If you're in aquaponics just as a home grower and you're just trying to feed your family or whatever, there's other considerations that we're gonna talk about in this video. It's okay to have fish as fertilizer makers in a home grow setting, but not a business setting. So make sure you consider both your ambient temperature and what you're gonna do with these fish, and then go from there. The first species I wanna talk about is channel catfish. I've had good success raising channel catfish in indoor recirculating tanks. They do pretty good. They're pretty tolerant to water quality parameters. I actually read a paper somewhere that said they can withstand dissolved oxygen levels lower than two parts per million. They are resilient when it comes to temperature. They seem to eat a decent amount of food to feed my system. All in all, they are a good, solid fish. They don't seem to grow as fast as some of my other species of fish that I've had in the past. And the biggest problem that I've had with them is they develop skin lesions. This could be from many different things. I think it's because they tend to stick to the bottom and kind of rub up against stuff. When you combine that with possibly poor water quality, you could end up with some catfish that have lesions on them. Since I added my UV sterilizer to my system, I haven't had any issues with skin lesions in catfish this year but that could be because of something else as well. It took almost a year, but my catfish are finally trained to eat floating food. In the beginning, you're gonna have to use sinking food because they tend to sit on the bottom, which sometimes is bad because you wanna make sure they're eating and doing what they're supposed to be doing. One good thing about them hanging out on the bottom is that they don't jump out as much as some other species of fish, which is really great. So if you have access to channel catfish, especially if you're down south in that Mississippi River Valley, get your hands on some, they'll do fine. The next group of fish I want to talk about are cyprinids. This is a family that consists of clown loaches, koi, goldfish, carp, and the like. Let's start with why I like cyprinids. First of all, a big thing for me is they are tolerant of water quality conditions. Especially temperature, they don't seem to care. They're gonna eat and do their thing pretty much any temperature you provide them. They will eat more when it's warmer, but they will survive very, very frigid temperatures as well. That being said, goldfish tend to kind of eat and eat and eat, and they don't grow much, so it's kind of a waste of food unless, you, again, you're using them as fertilizer makers. You also wanna make sure you can sell them. Pet stores sell them for like a nickel sometimes each. So I don't know how much market there is for them. That's gonna depend on your area. But they will eat and they will sustain an aquaponics system. Now let's talk about koi. There seems to be some demand for koi, but it takes years and a lot of food for the koi to get to that football size, I want you in my pond size fish. I think it's a better food investment to feed koi as opposed to feeding goldfish because they're gonna do the same thing pretty much, but koi are actually going to get bigger. I have seen some pretty crazy water gardens selling koi for like hundreds of dollars. But if you can sell them, absolutely do that. But I think there's better products that you can get from an aquaponics fish. A couple other good things that I'll say about cyprinids is you can actually spawn them in captivity and they don't jump out as much as other species either. So for these reasons, especially if you're starting out in aquaponics, goldfish are a go. And finally,
Let's talk tilapia. You guys probably knew this was coming if you followed me for any length of time. Tilapia are freaking sweet. They definitely get a wrongful, bad reputation from various literature online, so don't believe everything that you read and see about tilapia. Like I say in some of my Instagram posts, if you are raising a fish in water quality that's monitored and maintained and clean, it's probably better than a lot of store-bought alternatives. So why are tilapia good? They can withstand very poor water quality conditions. They grow pretty fast. They can get to two pounds in a little over a year in my experience. They like it warm, which can increase your plant growth speed sometimes. They can be spawned in captivity. The meat flavor is good for a freshwater fish. They seem to be pretty resistant to diseases. They'll eat a lot of food to help your plants grow. There's plenty of reasons why they're good. I think that they're just a great all-purpose fish. They're gonna eat, they're gonna help your plants grow. You can sell them, you can breed them. They won't die in poor water quality conditions. They're just good all around, especially for beginners, but even for advanced growers, I think that you can make a profit from tilapia. Sometimes they can, like any fish, give you a little bit of a headache. They tend to want to spawn in captivity if males and females are in the same tank. If you're wondering how to tell males and females apart, check out my post on Instagram explaining that. They also jump out like crazy. You want to make sure that you have a nice sturdy lid on these fish tanks or else you're going to lose a lot of tilapia on the ground which stinks if you're growing tilapia you definitely have to make sure your water temperature is in the 70s i would say you can have them in the 60s and they'll eat and they'll grow but they'll do it pretty slowly the difference in their eating and behavior changes drastically when you get warmer once you get below 55 they start dying and once you get above 80 they tend to want to reproduce it's not always easy to find sources of tilapia and some of the online sources I've seen really overcharge for them. They charge like a dollar per fingerling, which is a lot of money for a very small fish. So if you're able to grow tilapia out and you have some mature ones, I definitely would look into spawning them in captivity. That way you can kind of fund your own operation with fish. So there you go guys. Those are my three favorite species of fish to raise in aquaponics. Whether you're the home grower and you're looking for a fertilizer maker, or you're a farmer, a business owner, and you're looking for some profit. Try them out, let me know how it goes.